Welcome to the lecture series on reinforcement learning. In this video, we explore how we can represent input and output with an artificial neural network. The famous applications of reinforcement learning use deep artificial neural networks, be it for chess and Go, and these approaches became famous around 2015, but in fact, it has a much longer history. Backgammon uh, was analyzed with, anal with artificial neural networks already in 1992. In all these cases, the idea is that the input configuration on the board is represented by a large number of neurons and the output represent Q values, Q values for each of the different actions that are possible in the game. And once we know the Q values, actions are relatively easy to choose. For example, we can use the softmax strategy for a given action A prime. The question then is, how can we optimize the parameters of the network so that the Q values have representative values? Well, we do this by learning weights during uh, many trials where the algorithm plays against itself. If we use the Sarsa algorithm, then the error function is um, the one that we discussed before. Similarly, if the aim is in the end to use Q learning to have an optimal strategy, then the error function is analogous. Now, what are these Q values and V values? The Q values are the expected total discounted rewards starting in a certain state S with action A1, whereas the V values are the values in a state. So starting in action in state S, what is the total future amount that we can of reward that we can collect? And uh, this can be re-expressed by the Q values. Now for V values, learning with V values, we would not uh, use the standard error function discussed before, but we would do a semi-gradient or loss function that compares the V value in state S with the V value in the state S prime and the momentary target, the momentary reward RT and V of S prime together form the target which should be stable and therefore we only take the gradient with respect uh, to V of S given W. So how can we use this for backgammon? As I said, it's a long history. Here I summarized the paper from 1995 by Gary Tesauro. So the action is to move pieces and the actions are chosen in an epsilon greedy fashion so as to increase the V value in each step. So you look forward, where can I go? What would be the V value of these possible positions? And then you try to play greedy, you pick an action that maximally increases the V value. The neural network parameterizes these V values as a function of the state S. There's one single output, that's the V value. And we learn weights, as mentioned before, by playing against itself. We learn this using an error function. The error function represents the TD error of the V values. And importantly, we use eligibility traces. Now note that this is a discrete game. However, the input are nicely represented such that generalization across different similar position is possible. And with this, uh, a trained neural network achieved already in 1995 a level of performance that perfectly uh, played the game at a level where it could beat the masters in the field. So let's summarize. We want to use neural networks. We model with neural networks, the transformation from an input space to the output. For control problems, problems in space, the input space is naturally continuous. 
for example, here, a moon lander that has to land between the poles. Well, a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right makes sense. This little bit is in a space where neighborhoods are well defined. And the idea is to choose the represent, representation that makes generalization to neighboring states easy. Now, in discrete games, we don't have this natural continuous space. Nevertheless, the combinatorial space is often too big to be really represented. And then we use deep neural networks or neural networks with a few hidden layers to generalize across similar position. So the hidden states create a neighborhood relation. And again, the idea is that this is trained so that generalization becomes easy. In all the methods, whether it's implemented in a neural network, in a shallow network, in a deep network, or in a rate basis function network, in all these methods I've discussed so far, we use TD learning methods. This includes n-step SARSA, or Q-learning, or TD of Lambda, or other algorithms with eligibility traces. The central quantities are v-values or q-values. And then once we have the v-values or q-values, actions are taken with softmax, with greedy, or with epsilon greedy policy, which directly follow from these learned q-values or v-values. Now, these q-values or v-values are the outputs of the artificial neural network.